by the time I got to like 20, I started getting bad, bad and walking with gun mm. and everything else, what it entails. And it accumulated in me getting stopped by James and his colleague and me shooting him and his colleague. We bumped into um, Leroy and his colleague who were, who were acting suspiciously at the time. There was um, We go to a, a gun call nearly every shift. Mad. And we're only talking about a very small area. Yeah, I understand. Because to be honest, with that whole situation, that could have gone a lot of ways. Yes. A they, lot of yeah, ways. They didn't have to let, they, listen, they didn't have to let me out. My oh. brother here could have been dead. You yeah. understand? Yeah. A lot of things could have happened. And I always say to a lot of people that come on the, like, the podcast, do you feel like Joe was kind of like a blessing for you? I feel like if that had not had happened, you'd probably still be, not no, maybe now, dead. but yeah, you would have been either dead yeah. or on bullshit still. Money in to send it to Jamaica, like five grand or something, and some guy from America, it was American accent, he was doing whatever, and I just felt like he was pushing into what I was doing. And I said to him, brother, something or another, and then his response wasn't what I wanted. And I went to draw for the, t- and my brethren had to push me away. And like he just said, see, that's why we don't like going nowhere with you, mm. blah, blah, blah. And then we just ended up not using the Western Union and leaving and me and him was cussing and arguing with each other. How long would you have got for a pistol back then? No, now it's like five no, years. but there's a bit, there's a backdrop to the story. Go on. Yeah. I had already escaped from prison for armed robbery. Everywhere I go, I'm moving reckless and I'm selling drugs and I'm partying with gunmen and killers mm. and... I'm willing to do the thing myself. Everything, mm. the mindset of the crowd and the people has changed. Mm. Back then, you can go to a dance and be bare gunshot. And no one and, will talk. And no one won't say nothing. Yeah. It's can like, imagine. them man there, them man there. Yeah. That's it. Now, they're looking at you thinking you dirty murderer. And it got to a stage before I'd even laid hands on um, Leroy's colleague at the time, the atmosphere had just changed. Mm. It's like we're gone. A step too far, yeah. And straight, but you've gone over that line, if you like, that you can't withdraw it. You can't say, "No, I'm not going to do that now." You have to carry on with what you, you were going to do, and it just really changed. And I went to search my bloke, and Simon went to search Leroy, who's badly injured. Yeah, I've got nothing to protect myself. I'm helpless. Yeah, literally. And that is one of the worst feelings that I think you can ever have in life. Yes, guys, so it's Rebels and we're back with another episode of the DMC podcast. Now, today is a different sort of episode, to be honest to you. I've had loads of different people on. I've had magicians, gangsters. I've had an ex cop on before, actually, funny enough. But right now, we've got a different sort of um, dynamic, I would say, personally. So would you guys like to introduce yourself just for who you are? Uh, my name's Leroy Smith. Yep. Um, it, it might, none of our faces, yeah? You can see everyone's face. Calm. Car- sorry, carry on. Yourself? Uh, my name's James Single. Cool. So... Who are you both as just individuals? Like, what? what? So I'm uh, a, a guy from South London mm-hmm. who ended up going to prison for a very long time. So, what's a very long time? How long? Twenty years out of a twenty-five year sentence. Cool, fair enough. And yourself? Um, I was a police officer for thirty years. So, pull that a bit closer, bro. And um, I retired just over six years ago. I still work for the police as police staff. Okay. Fair enough. What was your job in the police? Um, I was just um, on uh, on patrol, basically, uh, for 21 years. And then I went up to the driving school at Hendon to train police drivers for the cool. last nine years. And that's what I do now. Cool, fair enough. Now, you guys are probably sitting there thinking, why on earth is there a police officer and someone from South London Bricks are just sitting next to each other, especially with a book that you've both got a part in, right? Cool. So, um, we're just going to get into it anyway, just to get from start to finish kind of where it is. So... Growing up, growing up in South London, how was that? Yeah, so basically, I grew up in South London mm-hmm. with my gran, and my mum got murdered when I was two, and I just ended up being around people who are more sh- on the street side of everything. Okay, sorry. Because cool. cool. they was like the people what had everything, mm-hmm. and this just led me down a path what, eventually ended up with me doing the kind of things what I did Mm. what put me in prison for 20 25 years okay no so that's all good now that's perfect cool so yeah um what age do you reckon like from from 11 12 13 and Mm. it just started and I went to prison the first time when I was 14 I went to DC 
It's like a detention center called okay. Send. It's a very nasty place. And yeah, I took life just seemed like like uh, it never I don't know, when you're young, you just take things for a joke more time and you don't really look at things how you should because you're young in it. And then where my mum got murdered, I probably blocked off a lot of stuff. Mm. I just wanted to live for the day. And it was always going down a road that was the wrong road more and more every day. Right, fair enough. What was the first thing that you ever got convi- like went to jail for? Uh, that was street robbery. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Cool. Um, so, what year is that roughly? What time period is that? Like when I was fourteen. Cool. So talking donkeys years ago. So, how? What would you would you have been in the police force around that time period? Uh, I joined in 1984. Okay. Cool. So I'd probably be a bit, a bit before when I joined. Fair enough. So now, let's go to say that situation of whatever. So, what year is this roughly in the 90s now? Isn't that right. Right. So basically, I go in and out of prison. Throughout the time. Throughout the time. Mm. The biggest sentence I ever did was three years. And then by the time I got to like 20, I started getting bad, bad and walking with gun mm. and everything else, what it entails. So you just end up doing a lot of things wrapped around that gun. Yeah. And every time you're just getting worse and worse and the more things you do, the more things you're willing to do. And it accumulated in me getting stopped by James and his colleague and me shooting him and his colleague and making good my escape and then getting arrested a, a few months later in America. Yeah. And then that's how it comes. I ended up getting the 25 years. Right. So, yeah, yeah as you've just heard him say it. So that was an altercation that happened in 96, right? 94. 94. Yeah. Cool. What... How did that day even start for both of you? Starting from you, like just a normal day at work, just I assume. a normal late shift at work. Mm. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. Mm. I was just driving one of the emergency response vehicles and um, me and my colleague decided to look for a bit of overtime. And um, the easiest way, and it's so easy, it was in those days, still is, is just a, a bit of puff. Okay. And um, we went to the usual areas where people would buy and... Um, we bumped into um, Leroy and his colleague who were who were acting suspiciously at the time. Of course. Cool. So now Brixton, as an area, obviously Brixton has has had so much phases, different ages, different generations. How was Brixton back then? For was, say, for you as someone in the streets and you as a police officer starting with you, how was it? It was it was a it was a crazy place. But mm, yeah. I was moving uh, hot bait, whatever way you want to say it, for the want of a bit looking back because I had on a bomber jacket. With a Uzi logo on the back, yeah. full size, the size of my whole back, and it says justice underneath. Yeah, and some big boots and some big gold chain. So you were even trying to hide it, type no. shit. You was just you there. And, mm. I, and there's a pistol mm. and on the back of a motorbike. So the whole of it's bait. You understand? Yeah. And the whole, but to me, that was just normal, cutting through community that was a day-to-day type of thing yeah in those days yeah cool and then for you would you work in and out of brixton like on a regular basis yeah i was um i started off working at south norwood and then in those days every um five or six years you got moved because of the Sc- scarman report what's that from the brixton riots in 81 okay so they didn't want officers getting too familiar with each other makes sense um, so you get moved which not got an issue with that um so i got moved to brixton mm. and um yeah it's a rough place it was tough um, there was um, we go to a, a gun call nearly every shift, Mad. and we're only talking about a very small area. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of um, lot of knife crime. Um, yeah, t- tough place. So, as a uh, ex criminal and as an ex police officer, would you say compared to now to then, I like say being in Brixton now. To then, what I'll do you think you, the difference I'll is? I'll tell you the difference. Big man thing. The difference is the youths or the, the young people, they're more feral. Yeah, they move like some little hyenas. You understand? They ain't about no one up, nothing. It's not no warrior, nothing. It's 30 deep, phone your friend, on do whatever mad links you got. Yeah. And the next thing, 30 man pop up from nowhere. Yeah. And, and village you. Yeah. That's what's going on. Mm. So. When you're working under those dynamics, yeah, it's more serious. Because when you get 
caught up, you you can get fucked properly, yeah. And but it's cowardice more because it's thirty people. Mm. Do you understand? And to me, none of it makes any sense because before it used to be about money, yeah. yeah, yeah. And now they don't even know what it's about doing each other for nothing. Your own people, yeah. Like it hurts my heart. Mm. That's the truth because there's no real money involved in it, and you're just doing that to each other for some title or whatever. What by two weeks time, people forgot about you. Mm. you do a murder now, it's ten a penny. There's a million people on remand for murder, and then after two, three weeks, realistically two years, no one's not interested in you again. It's true. You understand? Life's moved on and you're just a number now mm. for the next 30 years. It's not a joke and people are moving like it's virtual reality and it's not, it's reality. Yeah. You understand? So, yeah. And being a police officer and say those times compared to now, obviously you're not a police officer now. When did you retire? Um, 2014. So say from the 90s to 2014, what's the difference would you say? Um, In those type of environments anyway. Yeah, they, it, Brixton has changed without a doubt. Um, for the better or worse? I would say for the better, generally speaking. Mm. Um, you know, I've got family that socialise there and they probably wouldn't have dreamt of doing that in the 90s. Um, but it is, has still got its rough side to it. Was it predominantly black there before? Yeah. Okay. So what time period does kind of like it's, wind it's, rush? There's loads of yeah. stuff in when people are coming over. Is that like a key yeah, kind of no, point to where everyone's coming over? In them times in the 80s and 90s, mm. it was different. The line, yeah, real, them times, bad man, you might as well say it was bad man. They're having knife fight on there, cut for cut. Some mm. real old school warriors, them man, they are laying it down and they're bad for true on their ones. You understand? And the whole place knows it, you know, like that. So it was different. And then who was bad was really bad and fool had to understand themselves and they take talk. So everything had an order to it much more sensible than now. Mm. Now everybody's bad because they told themselves that in their bedroom. And then there's an issue to prove it every step of the way. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's great to know because I'm 22 and so I'm from a completely different generation to you guys. So it's just so everyone can get the difference between today and back then, and then even for obviously the crime that transpired to back then, it's just a completely different world, different bro. World, and completely no, different world. There was no internet and all of that, like nah. Now. So now everything can join it's on up cameras, in always seconds. everything. It's different. It's a madness. Um, Virtual reality. Yeah. So you know how you said you went for three years. What was that for? What was that for? I think it was for burglary and it's a weird it's a weird charge yeah but it amounts to blackmail okay it amounts to threatening someone and taking money from them or right. jewellery or whatever how old are you? I was like uh, 18 I think or 19 cool so then that main incident that you did the main bird how old were you then? I did uh, like how old were you when you got two years out of the three years okay so I must have come out I must have gone in around 18 or 17, 18 and come out around 19. And then after that, things just stepped up because when we was going all around the M25 and all of that, them houses around Surrey, those kind of people are well to do and they go shooting and all of that. So they will have shotguns and that in their house. Chilling, yeah. You get me? So then you'll come across them things. You know, back then, in terms of firearms... Um, obviously, anyone can get one anyway, but like... Not that easy, but... Not one now. Not that easy as people make out, you know. Okay. I, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But, well, say back yeah. then, people had them a bit more free, like, you could have, like, a more gun license. There's more guns about, yeah. right? Officially. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, officially, guns, yeah, yeah. Legally. Yeah. Because all, all the, the bands wasn't existing because that guy, what, killed the kids. The kids, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was something that happened at dumb, school. That's when they cut down, right? Yeah, in Scotland. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so yeah and he, then from then, that's when they went strict on the guns. Only two twos calibre. That's a okay. school calibre. Yeah. But, why I'm saying it's not everywhere, yeah? If it was everywhere, all those kids who are doing stabbings would be doing shootings. True. They're doing stabbings because they haven't got no the guns. Access to it, it's yeah. not that easy to get. Mm -hmm. You understand? You have to be in certain circles or go out your way to get that for yourself. Yeah. From foreign. 
It's not a thing where you could kind of just come across one. You had to actually oh, have those yeah. links to get yes. it more. One else. time you could just come across it. Mm. Like a burglary or this or that. Because yeah, that's what you're saying. You're basically yeah. going to areas that you knew would have had that type of shit back then. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so when you said you do two in a bit, but that just to get a timeline, you're 20 something, right? 20, early uh, 20s. By the time I come out, I must be no more than coming up to 20. Okay. So then when, uh, how long are you on the road before that mad, like the main thing? Right. Happens. what's going so, on in that time period yeah so everything escalates from that's it because what happens is when i before i go on the three years my friends what i used to be doing all them little burglaries with and all that they ended up getting uh, firearms and all that as well and ended up start doing bare mad arm robberies and mm. when i'm in prison i see them on on uh, crime watch wanted for lloyd's banks all around the m25 and all of this madness Man's got 200 grand in a shoebox under his bed. Where thing they took a lot of money, yeah, around the M25, and it's like starts off with a burglary. So they burgle it from the night before, and then it turns into an armed robbery at five o'clock while it's still open. So I, they've mixed the two together. Right. So I'm in prison thinking, oh. Can't wait to get yeah, out that shit. You understand? Because them man them stepped up the thing. Yeah. So then by the time I come out, they've got sentence. So one of them's doing 12, and the other one's doing 11. Mm -hmm. And then I jump on it after them because I'm going to jump on the same vein what they was on, but yeah. with different people now. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. Cool. And as a police officer in that time period, which he was, right? He was a police officer at that point. How was it for like crime? What was the main sort of crime? Because now it looks like it's mainly like stabbings and there's not really much robberies, I would say, right now. Was that like the big thing back then? Then there was a lot of, yeah, a lot of burglaries. Mm. Um, I mean, a lot of what you deal with is domestics. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that is probably three quarters of your work is mm -hmm. dealing with domestics. Um, less than half what you deal with is crime related. Yeah. But there was a lot of um, lot of burglaries. And the street robberies sort of were more um, to certain areas, what we'd call inner city areas, was now that's changed because communities have changed over the last 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so, um, yeah, the, the only thing I'd say is where, like, with somewhere like Brixton, where, it's, where when you police it, is a lot of the time you only see um, the bad side or the, the bad side of life. You don't really go and deal with happy incidents. It mm -hmm. doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. But when I went back to work at Brixton after the shooting, the amount of people from the black community especially of all ages that came out and spoke to me, it was um, really heartwarming. Yeah. So, especially back then, because obviously now um, it's a bit, like, there's not really much, other than recently, there's been a bit of, like, racial tension in certain groups, but, like, back then, was there any racial tension? What say, in Brixton, like, say, if, like, a white police of obviously, there's always going to be tension with, yeah, like, criminals course, and police, but black changed. and white, I'm saying, like, yeah, in yeah, there, yeah, they yeah. was like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's never changed. I've okay. been in a car, and a, and a policeman is looking at, a next a black man's driving his car but he made a bad drive mm. yeah and he niggered him off and i was in the car but i know i couldn't say nothing because i know that's a he's trying to line me up so when i say something now then that's against you, type me in. you understand yeah. so i just kept my mouth shut i never said nothing and we just went to the station mm. this is this is the kind of little stupid things but that's just set little people what's got their mindset and they're not changing their mindset that's mm. not the i don't think that's the majority, I think that's the small amount, but the small amount overrides the, the big amount. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm with you, I'm with you. So That's the truth. Between all of those times, as I said, stuff changing. Like, even when you're in jail, you're still in jail, but life's just changing. Everything's changing in time. Say from, like, your first... Uh, how long was the first one? Four you're months. Like four months, say, to, like, your free year. Would you say, like, jail changed at all? Because then you would have been an adult in the second bit, innit? Yeah, so every time is an experience, and I'm learning more and meeting more people, but I wasn't kind of understanding this is all long. So I'm thinking I'm just doing and doing and doing at that stage. Mm -hmm. the only, when it kicked in was when it was too late. Yeah, literally. Do you understand? Yeah. And that's basically what reached me. So that's why I like telling people now so it can help them before it's too late, then I'm doing them a favour. Yeah. Because they don't have to feel that pain and misery and go for it because they might not be so lucky as me it's true which is a high probability 
Yeah, I understand. Because to be honest, with that whole situation, that could have gone a lot of ways. Yes. A they, lot of yeah, ways. And they didn't have to let, they, listen, they didn't have to let me out. My oh. brother here could have been dead. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. A lot of things could have happened. You get me? Especially when it's crime against police, like, yeah. they take that shit yeah, yeah, and yeah, pull yeah, it a bit yeah. closer, bro. Yeah, like, they take it bit. very serious. They take it very serious. So the way it's dealt with, say, like, if you had shot me compared to a police officer, yeah. it's mad. There's a, there's a very big difference. When um, I got 25 right. years, though, that was, like, what, the big sentence, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the IRA was getting. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why I never got more. Right. Because if you're giving an IRA man 25, you can't really give me more. Yeah. Does that make sense? You. I'm with you. So, but now I would have got life. Yeah, you would have been lifed off, yeah, 100%. It. It's mad. Um, I do want to get into the actual, obviously, that whole day and scenario, but just even leading up to that. So, as I said, how long is the time period between that three year where you're like, all right, cool, I'm seeing what everyone's doing on the road, Everyone's making money. I'm going to come out. How do you end up? Like, what's going on? How long are you out for? So, basically, I just keep criming and doing different things. And then robbery start working, mm-hmm. start getting money, going to Jamaica. Then you realise that drugs is over there. Mm-hmm. It's cheap, yeah? Get involved in a little bit of that, a little bit of everything, what can work around living your life at the same time. So, drug dealing can work to stick it on one and two people and make them give you things can work Mm -hmm. and then the more you do and the more serious you apply yourself the more things will go your way because people will just think oh my man is long just you understand so at that point would you say things were going your way then the way you wanted it at that time anyway my way yeah Cool. And that was my mistake because when things are working, you don't change. You yeah, you're not. You it. just keep doing it because working for you anyway. So there's no need to kind of change it. Big, sort big of mistake. thing. Um, so yeah, things are going your way. How long do you go your way for? Is that years? Three years? Two years? About that. Three, two years. Cool. And then during that time, obviously, just whatever's going on is going yeah, on. Going to Jamaica, living, mm. just living my life. Yeah. And obviously, I had access to money at all times. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, I was in that little sweet. spot what where not much people was in that situation at my age kind of with money every day like 10 grand pocket money you would have been like what yeah, like 20, early 20s yeah 22 23 like that uh you can lay it down on people no one ain't giving you talk so it's kind of all going in your way and it's just building you up to be a bad person because mm-hmm. every day is intoxicating yourself more and more with this mindset that this, this way or the highway what's going through your head like these days so everything's going your way you're doing whatever you're doing like are you thinking of an end goal are you just living no, it day I by just day day by day just taking it for yeah, what it I was every day, day by day taking it for what it was and just being a bit naive really mm. thinking just not looking ahead yeah do you understand because if i was i wouldn't have been thinking like this and i always say to a lot of people that come on the like the podcast do you feel like joe was kind of like a blessing for you I feel like if that had not had happened, you'd probably still be not no, maybe I now, been dead. but yeah, you would have been either dead mm, yeah. or on bullshit still. Mm, I would have been dead for sure. So I although you went to jail for a very long time, it kind of saved your life. Yeah, in a way, in you, could, you could you could look at it like that. Of course, there's negatives yeah. too. It's not a positive, but it's yeah, yeah you it could look at it like that because yeah. it was that was the best what could happen out of a lot of bad stuff. The route you're going down, from what it sounds like, yeah, yeah, yeah. literally. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get into that day anyway. So. Do you, do you remember the day, like the exact date that that happened? 9th of March. James will remember it more clearly. 1994. 9th of March, 1994. I think it was 9.38pm. <laughs> remembers everything. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got a reasonable print out of So these. March, that would be, yeah, so it would have been like pitch black those times as well. Yeah, it so was cool. Time. So night time, how do you start your day? It's a normal day. Well, it is them times I was coming back from Jamaica and uh, I would like sleep in the daytime so that by the time I touch the road it's just getting dark so I'm not really about in the daylight because obviously I'm a gunman and I want to be in the dark as mm-hmm. much as possible because everything's in my favour in the dark does that make sense? a lot of sense yeah, yeah mm-hmm. so that's what we was doing so I'd go parties restaurants whatever sleep in the daytime and then wake up again like 3, 4 in the day and then get ready to touch the road like 5, 6 as soon as it touches dark so that day was just a normal day. And then I sent someone to go and collect some money from a pub, which was that pub. So he was running a the business then? Yeah. Well. yeah. And he didn't collect the money and gave the person another uh, ounce of, of, of whatever, white, yeah. Mm-hmm. And 
I decided to go there myself and collect the money. The, the guy was my friend who the money was. It wasn't no robbery or nothing funny going on. It was just and like business between you yeah, and someone. Yeah, that and the knew. guy would give me my money, but I told this one to get the money and then give him. Don't give him and not get my money. Yeah. You understand? And if I was more of a regimental person with the people around me and I weren't so loving to the people around me, yeah, I would have said to him, brother, go back there and get the money real fast, yeah, before I do you something. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I just jumped on the bike myself. Done your own thing, and yeah. I shouldn't have did that because mm. really it was his thing to go and sort out. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I came back and I told him what happened, his eyes are opening wide and he's saying, don't lie. And even then, I didn't do him something. Mm. You understand? Because it's, it's, I'm not trying to blame the blame on other people, but in that scenario... I've told him to do something, he's not done it, and I've rectified it by doing it myself, and that's caused me to Everything be in this situation. Do you understand? Right. Yeah, so your day, normal day, you're looking for overtime, you said, right? Yeah. And what time would what time does the overtime start? So what time would you have um, finished on a normal day? That started, I think, about 10 o'clock. So okay. all, all we used to do was on that time, but it was, um, the landlord was absolutely good as gold. He was um, like um West Indian fella. And um, really nice bloke, but unfortunately, um, the people that went in this pub obviously dealt, and it was a good place to buy drugs. Mm -hmm. So you just watch somebody go in one door, and if they came out the other door within a minute, you knew you knew what it was, kind of thing. Yeah, and it was it was that simple. Did you guys know each other before? Well, did no, you know of him? No, never no, heard I, of him. At all. One of the calls, um, which is mentioned in our book, that I actually went to, and I, but I just didn't know it was Leroy. Okay, um, but I. I knew nothing of him. I don't think, from what I can remember, there was any any intel on him at all that I can remember. Right. I mean, it's a long time. That's ago how it comes. It happened because if they ask. did know who I was, yeah, then with respect, you would they wouldn't have stopped there. me like that, would you? No, you we did. Just... We did a, a check on the bike, right? And it wasn't registered. So okay. straight away, you know, we've seen them in a seen Leroy get off and going to a, a, the a known known place known for of, drug dealing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he's not in there for very long. Mm. And so everything's all building up. Like, hang on, these two are up to something. Yeah, so you automatically know. Yeah, what's going so, on. Right. so you got a call to what for we didn't get the a pub? Call. Or you just come across what we it. Saw. Purely what we saw. Okay. Right. And I've yeah. seen, I've seen them when I when when I was riding on the bike here, I saw the Sierra go down, and I saw it indicate. You know, and I said to you the guy who I was with, I said to him, brother, come make we do what we're doing here because that car's gonna come back round, and then I swear down. As I said that, I'm trying to speed him up, yeah, because he was trying to talk to some guy, this white guy. And then the next thing you know, he went to do something and the bike, he touched it and it's got one of them starting, you know, one of them cut off things. So if you touch the bike prematurely, it cuts off and you have to wait for a yeah, minute. Yeah. So that's what happened. So we're just standing there now at the bike. And then that's how the Sierra got time to go around and come back to us. Mm. So it was just like un bad everything so when you're doing this stuff and even on that day was please ever on your mind when you're doing this type of stuff and you're dressed up how you are and you're doing whatever you're doing did you ever think like i've been stopped please. a few times and i and i've got everything on me and i'm just calm and i just talk because i wasn't a very i had too much confidence in what i was doing you right. understand so when you've got too much confidence that's what can happen you just end up doing things and feeling that you're everything when really it's just in your head but it will make you do a lot of stuff so at that time like how are you as a person just feeling invincible do you feel yeah, like you was invincible yeah, then and like no one I nothing yeah stop you. and i weren't too nice okay i wasn't i was nice to people what i liked but if i weren't like nice it, to people what i didn't like or any little thing mm -hmm. could just fly me off right like easy 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 like even one time western union in victoria train station mm. And I went to put some money in to send it to Jamaica, like five grand or something. And some guy from America, it was American accent, he was doing whatever. And I just felt like he was pushing into what I was doing. And I said to him, brother, something another. And then his response wasn't what I wanted. And I went to draw for the, t and my brethren had to push me away. And like he just said, see, that's why we don't like going nowhere with you, mm. blah, blah, blah. And then we just ended up not using the Western Union and leaving. And me and him was cussing and arguing with each other. Because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Mm. And really, that would have been Looking suicide. Looking back at that. That's suicide. That's and crazy. stupid. Yeah. We're in a train station. It's full of camera. And the man, I don't even know him. 
Mm. You get me? So that's what can happen. I think that's the thing as well, though. And even back to this situation, I feel like a lot of crime that does happen comes back to people kind of acting impulsively off of shit rather than actually thinking, hey, here's, here's A, here's B, here's C, here's D. What am I going to do? You just do whatever first comes to your head without even thinking what right. what is next. So even going into that now, you've seen the car spun around, right? Yeah. You know it spun around. The pad's not working. Yeah. What's what's going through your head? And it's a 600cc, so I know if that bike's working, we're gone. Mm -hmm. But it's not. So I wasn't thinking, I was just thinking, when the car pulled came in front in my vision, I was thinking, oh, no. Nah. Because obviously... You're in my situation. You don't want to see police. What did you have on you at that time? I'm sure you could say you've gone jail. Yeah, surely, a, so. a, a Zig Zoya pistol. Okay. So basically, I'm thinking, I don't want to, I don't want this, but it's happening now. So there's nothing you can do. How long would you have got for a pistol back then? I know now it's like five no, years. No, but there's a bit, there's a backdrop to the story. Go on. Yeah. I had already escaped from prison for armed robbery. You escaped from prison. Yeah. So technically you was already meant to be serving a bad, but you was on the road no, from no. escaping. What happened was I got arrested for armed robbery in Leicester and I got put on remand and I escaped while I was on remand and my co-defendant got found guilty and got 12 years. So I, and they had me as a leader. So I know I'm looking at at least as 15 yeah. on that one alone. Then the couple of answers are crack and then the gun. So now you're talking 20. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All in half a second. So you escaped like basically. That. How the f how dude is that open? Is that no, known? Right. Like how you yeah, escaped? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. So basically, yeah. uh, without going into, I just break it quickly. Go for yeah? It, yeah. Basically, I got moved. I was on remand in Leicester. We was acting up in there. The, we got all the locals at it, and they started writing and giving the staff problems. So they moved me to another prison. When they moved me to another prison, I started in there too. And they didn't know what to do with me, so they said they're sending me back to where I just came from. But while I was at the other prison, it was new. They had these tags and this funny stuff, what they had to put your clothes in. And I had a visit, and I got someone to bring me a knife. And I had the knife, put it in a sugar bag, went back to the other jail. And then they said to me, right, you're not going upstairs because one of your codies as solicitor has told us that you're bullying him to plead guilty, yeah? Because obviously someone had to hold this thing because what it was... He, he never cleaned what was it yeah he didn't take the, the number plate off the car okay. the stolen number plate which joined it to the robbery and then obviously there was a scenario where if one person put their hands up the rest could go home kind of because the story would make sense mm -hmm. but it didn't make sense with all of us going on guilty so unless no one, anyone owned it right. everyone was going basically right. so 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 he's got onto his solicitor because he didn't want to face us direct saying that we're bullying him and all this, so they didn't want to put me back on the wing. Mm -hmm. They said, right, we're going to move you to Brixton. Any more trouble out of here? And you're staying in the block until your trial, even if it's in two years' time. Mm -hmm. So I said, sweet. So then I knew I was going there in the next morning and I had the knife already in a sugar bag. So I secreted it, came in the car, because it was like a mini cab they took us in. It was handcuffed and cut a long story short. When we got to South London, I backed the knife on him and... Let made you know. good my escape mm. and basically that's what happened and uh, that was on tv and that was like a big thing oh back then yeah it was a big thing it was a big thing so what when you've done that how did you think that was gonna how long do you think that was gonna last for i didn't i didn't just, really think I that i didn't think that you just living just, in the day by yeah, day once so again I, I got out got a false passport and went to jamaica and just relaxed for a little while so then after uh, jamaica i've come back and then this is all of this now how long were you in jamaica for a few months okay understand mm -hmm. so this is now the sequence to all of that backdrop you understand what i mean so they know you was in jamaica no cause i'm using a false passport no, but you know like sometimes they'll just have they intel. might have intelligence That's what I'm saying. i don't know no, oh, i okay. don't know but basically what i know is i'm moving reckless mm. that's what i know i'm moving reckless You're not moving like someone that's wanted basically yeah and i'm moving reckless everywhere i go mm. You understand? Because I went in America as well. So everywhere I go, I'm moving reckless and I'm selling drugs and I'm pairing with gunmen and killers mm -hmm. and I'm willing to do the thing myself. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is just messy and I don't know why I thought it was going to ever come to anything but something terrible. Will come to evil, yeah. yeah it's It'll a bit be. stupid. But that's what happens when you're young sometimes. Mm. You just, you just, I don't know. 
just I don't know. I I could make excuses and everything, but I personally think what happened with my mum and certain things like that shaped things for the future. For I'm me. sure it would for probably ninety eight percent of the yeah, people that's in the what world. I think, yeah. Of course, I, I know you're not using it as an excuse, but the reality is that yeah. definitely would have had some form of impact on how yeah, you, how your think. mentality and just thinking like, like fuck it, innit? Like whatever you're taking mm. it day by day and whatnot. So back to that day, so you're wanted. I didn't even know that. <laughs> so these times you're wanted in Leicester. You've gone to Jamaica for a couple of months. You've come back. How long were you back for before that thing actually happened? The incident with James? Yeah. I was back in the country a few weeks. So how, how are you moving for those few weeks? I don't know how it's like to be wanted yeah, so back no, then. Basically, like, as I said, you, 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 you just set yourself up in a situation. You'd be at one girl's house or another girl's house or at a hotel mm. and you just go to your parties, go to your restaurants in the daytime and see who you want to see and just patch things in together like that. Mm. And everything's in cash mm-hmm. and that's it. So you're just keeping on the move basically yeah, day to day. just shop your food and just do what you're doing every day. Did you have any close calls? Like prior leading up to that moment where you was like, shit, that was close. Like I could have got caught. I, I, I've had times when I've been stopped and I've just been firm and spoke and everything's just panned out because I've been calm. Yeah. So like that, I've had close calls. I've had scenarios in that time when I was about before the incident with James where hairy things have happened, but it's 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 the norm. Because when you're taking risks, everything becomes less like if you're a policeman all the first after the first six months you're not scared of nothing again is it because you've seen enough i would presume to not be shocked mm. yeah at things. yeah that's a good way because you because you can you've seen enough you've experienced more than it kind the of, average yeah. person yeah you see every day yeah, yeah. does that mm-hmm. make sense yeah no, i'm with you because i could be on someone's roof i could be in your dustbin i could be doing anything yeah. you understand and when you do all this mad stuff enough Nothing will shock you. You think t- in today you could have got away with that for as long as you did? I don't think nah, so. I don't think I so. I think just with social media and just with the technology listen, now. Not only yeah. just the technology, really that, that the, everything, mm. the mindset of the crowd and the people has changed. Mm. Back then, you can go to a dance and be bare gunshot. And no one and, will talk. And no one won't say nothing. Yeah. It's can like, imagine. Them man there, yeah. them man there. Yeah. That's it. Now, they're looking at you thinking you dirty murderer. Yeah. yeah? You won't come and murder this or that. You understand? Mm. Who are you going to kill today? You know, like that. They're not looking at you like you're anyone. They're looking at you like, rightly so, with disgust. Mm. So you have to hide and do that. You, you understand? That, do you think it's better now? Like yeah, that? I think that's the right way around yeah. because really, why should the people was keeping up the fuckery be glorified? Yeah, you're And right. then the people was good Being and getting no rate, ratings. That don't make no sense. You mm. understand? So it's the more the right way around now than it was back then. Yeah. Back then it wasn't the right way around. And now, if you want to be that guy, it's only going to be in your little tiny circle with your little youths in your age bracket. Mm. Grown up people ain't going to be interested in you. You understand? Because they're just going to look at you like an idiot, basically. And then the people with the money and the influence and the opportunities, they're definitely not going to be interested in you. Mm-hmm. So your hand's going to be dead you got your life your span is short you understand so that's the next thing what's important for people to understand cool so that there span the car your thing's not working what happens do you guys even confiscate or do do they speed off like what happens what's next from both accounts um we went up to him and i don't know if it's me or my colleague said we we seen you in the, in the pub drugs pub mm-hmm. uh, I don't know what else we said. I can't remember now. But we went to separate them to search them for drugs. Um, and then I know a good way that Leroy describes it, everything got close. And it got to a stage, before I'd even laid hands on um, Leroy's colleague at the time, the atmosphere had just changed. Mm. It's like we'd gone a step too far. Yeah, and straight. But you've gone over that line, if you like, that you can't withdraw it. You can't say, no, I'm not going to do that now. You have to carry on with what you, you were going to do. And it just really changed. And I went to search my bloke and Simon went to search Leroy. And mm. then I was aware that they were struggling. There was a bit of a scuffle going on. And then um, I looked across and um, Leroy's pulled a handgun out of his waistband, mm-hmm. hit Simon in the leg, um, gone off, broken his leg. And then I've 
um, literally turn to see what I can do. You know, now time is slowed down. Yeah, it's it's like a dream. It's all slow time now. Yeah, um, and um, you've got a colleague there who's badly injured. Yeah, I've got nothing to protect myself. I'm helpless. Yeah, literally. And that is one of the worst feelings that I think you can ever have in life. That that sense of helplessness. Mm-hmm. And I literally turn to to look for somewhere to hide or run off or do whatever. Mm-hmm. And that's when um, Leroy shot me. Cool. Wow. And um, he had a row with his colleague at the time then. And it's quite funny about we talk about that anti-theft device on the bike because I never knew this from the police investigations until I met up with Leroy. Because I thought, well, why are they shouting at each other? Why don't they get on the bike and disappear? Yeah. And, and meeting he, with Leroy... You're pissed, basically. Has, has, yeah. has put the... Um, Jigsaw. Yeah, put that jigsaw together, and I never knew that. Mm. See, now guy, it makes perfect sense. He he was trying to run away, so I had to bring him back Your to friend. his senses. Yeah, okay. You understand this bad man from what, prior prior you discharging it? No, after it's all happened. After it's happened, okay. Yeah, but I won't even name him. Yeah, go into all of that. Yeah. He ended up turning into to to. Back then, I viewed him as a rat, but now. I don't view him as anything because I can't label anyone as anything. Yeah, he did what he did mm-hmm. for his own scenario, but in that world, that's not accepted. What he did, you understand? Mm-hmm. So basically, he informed on me, yeah, mm-hmm. for his own freedom, yeah. But before this happened, he was happy to run with me. You understand? Mm-hmm. That's the part I don't like. But I'm not gonna go into all of that. What's right. happened is he's tried to run off mm-hmm. and I've fired a shot in the air mm-hmm. to remind him where you're at, we're yeah. leaving it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he got on the bike and 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 we blew off. Yeah. How uh James described it is basically how it is and it's a fast scenario mm-hmm. and it's not nothing you're thinking deep. You just want to get away. Mm. Do you understand? Adrenaline. And 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 and, and that's what it is. It's, it's not nice. There's nothing nice in the scenario. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, you say, oh, we could have done this, could have done that. You ain't thinking like I'm that. I'm not thinking time. like that. And I know if I don't make good this, I'm fucked. Yeah. Do you understand? And that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was it. So once it starts, mm-hmm. it's not going to end that's until it. you've escaped. Or someone literally... Held you and locked you mm-hmm. and took away the gun. Yeah. That's the only way I was stopping. Do you understand? And that's what happens when you start. That's why if you go on a robbery and everyone's still and you keep everyone still, more likely nothing won't go wrong. Mm-hmm. But once people jump up and start throwing it's things, it's a plan type thing. Yeah, it goes out. It just of goes, goes pear shape. And you've seen the two police officers, James and his colleague at the time. What are you telling yourself? Are you thinking to, well, the car don't, the thing don't start. And you know they're police, so... I was hoping that I could just get a half search or just talk and just go. But you, what I couldn't hardly say, well, look, this is what it is. Like, in Jamaica, you might have to pull some stunt like that, but you couldn't do that in England. Mm-hmm. A policeman in England ain't listening to that, yeah? So you probably think it's not real or I don't know what, yeah? So it just happened like that. It wasn't mm-hmm. a thing what I could think. You understand? Did you have where where did you have it at the time? The gun? In my waist. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you get searched and did you actually know you were even gonna shoot any of them? I didn't know nothing. You didn't have that plan just off of no. impulse just in instantly. Yeah, I come on. I left my house mm-hmm. or the yard I was in, thinking I'm going to collect some money from someone who owes me the money. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? All of this has just happened and I've f- fought instead of flight. Instead of folding up, I fought for, for what I wanted, which was freedom, yeah? And that's what happened. I mean, in the sense of, um, I'm not saying it was premeditated. I'm saying, like, when they have searched you, have you said, if he touches this area or whatever, no, nah, no, nah, 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 That's nah, what nah, I meant nah, in that nah, sense. No, nah. no, nah. What it is, when you're dealing with all that gun thing, mm. you will just know to yourself your condition, your body, and where you are, mm. so you know how to react with people and you know when the space is getting too tight and all of this. Do you understand? That's what you were saying yeah, as well. There was yeah, a point. Right. What yeah. point did it hit at that? So that point is when I know now everyone's so close that if someone goes like this and grips me, 
it's over. Yeah. That's the point where it's not good for no one now. Mm-hmm. And if you know, even a policeman, if he backs a gun on you, he ain't gonna, if you're coming closer, he's either gonna just shoot you or move back and threaten to shoot you again until you stop, stop, stop. And then, and then he's back. gonna ban you. Right, he's yeah. not gonna come closer because then you two be too close mm-hmm. and that's not good. He's yeah. gonna be able to, if it's a stronger guy, like you're physical mm-hmm. and someone like me was not physical, I'm going to lose, innit? Yeah, physically, just mentally, you're going to tell yourself you're naturally right. just going to feel... You're not going to... Yeah. Right, so that's what happened and that's what he felt. Mm. That's what James felt when things switched on. Mm. Where like, and then it's just on. It's just happening fast now. But you shot, So you shot his friend in the leg. You're saying you was looking to run for cover or, or go just anywhere. just find somewhere. What, what do you do? So at this point, he's not really on no, you. No, so he's how not on me. Up? But the truth is, I'm thinking I need to escape and I need to escape. And I'm thinking that if I don't escape... Or if anything, I'm still going to get caught because then I don't know James as James now. And I'm thinking this man is going to fall. He's going to tell the rest this, that, that. And I'm going to get caught still. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? So it's all in the same still scenario. Still a threat to his freedom, aren't they? Right. So yeah. that's, what I'm, that's what I'm looking. And I'm looking to get away. And that's it. Where did you get hit? Uh, in the back. Went across the top of my kidney. And out the side. Okay, so just once. Yeah, yeah. So they both just hit once. But both of you, you and your colleague, was hit once. That's me. That's more than enough. Oh, well, 100%. It just one takes shot. one shot. Yeah, no, I was that's just making sure. Vicious, it's bro. 100%. That's if it hits the wrong thing or goes through the wrong place or yeah. whatever. Like, I wouldn't even want to get shot once. That's mm. the truth. I'll tell you straight. Mm. Well, it's a blessing that you're still alive. And even Absolutely. same for you, because had he died, you probably would have still got longer. No, nah, I wouldn't be coming out. Yeah. No person what's killed a police, police officer is coming released. out. Nah, it's not happening. In the history of this country. Never. It's not happening. So as I said, still yeah. slightly a blessing um, that that had happened. So that's happened. I assume you're both on the floor at some point in the time. Do you call? What's your protocol at that point? Are you tra- are you even trained for that sort of thing? Yeah, like, you. What um, happens? You um, yeah, I call that for help on the radio, um, and I know that as I was calling up the last shot that Leroy fired, they could hear in the control room. Wow. Okay. Um, and. Um, yeah, basically, I knew I had a leg injury, a, a back injury. So, your training is is um, basically don't move. You don't mm-hmm. know, you know, I was bleeding quite a lot, so I put um, three fingers of my left hand into my um, the exit wound to stop the bleeding. Right. Squeeze as hard as I could, um, and um, one thing that you we are taught, Serious. and it's for everybody in society, mm-hmm. not just police officers. But if you go to some traumatic incident, yeah, is think positive. Yeah. Always be positive. I'm going to live. I'm going to live. So I'm that's what live. you're telling yourself the whole and time. I'm telling myself, I'm not dying here. Mm. I am not dying here. And it's quite funny because my colleague was thinking exactly the same. Mm. Yeah. Then obviously it might be your injuries are that s- s- severe that, that you period, do die. Yeah. But at that point in time, I, I, I can remember thinking to myself, I ain't going. I ain't going here. Mm. Yeah. I think it is partially to do mentally though, you know, like yeah. if you tell yourself, cause like if you're panicking, your blood, your heart's going to start beating faster. You're going to start Absolutely. losing blood faster. So you yeah. really do have to be in a certain mental state to have the best chances, to be honest. hundred percent. So you now have now shot these people. You shot, shot in the sky. Is there even civilians around? Is there people around seeing all of yeah, this? There's transpire? people about, there's yeah. people about, but basically when we've shot off down the road, Brandish on some cars to make them stop on on uh, Tulsa and it's madness. Got off at Norwood, mm-hmm. dumped the crash helmet, and then ended up in a safe house. And then I'm just getting phone calls. Rrr, rrr, rrr. So Everyone's people know, yeah. And they're saying, you know what you have to do now. You know what you have to do now. And I don't know what I have to do, but they're just everyone's just onto me. Like leave, leave, leave. So ended up getting a lift to some country kind of place, Halifax or some place changing clothes changing gun changing everything and then i took a ferry from there to holland mm-hmm. and just was gone within 24 hours mad yeah. so you would have gone to hospital how was it looking in the hospital was it just an instant you'll be all right was it like a fight for life or what was the situation um, from the shoot? i think they said it was um i was serious but stable both of us okay so there wasn't ever really I, I wouldn't say not worried because he was obviously worried if it was serious but it wasn't like a fright for your life like he might die here um, 
Yeah, you still can do because of the internal trauma. Right. Does that makes sense. Like hasn't got a, you haven't got that. to sever an organ mm. or pierce an organ to, um, to to die. You can do it just through the shock, through the, the trauma mm-hmm. of that incident. Yeah, and, and what it does to your body and the mind. Yeah, you think. And, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, I was only in hospital for four days. Okay. Um, but I had to go back every day for about three or four weeks for checkups just to see uh, well basically you have the wound cleaned mm. um and what they do is they stitch it in the middle so that as it starts to heal all the crap and all the rubbish comes out of each side right and um my colleague he had a broken leg so he had, he had um his leg pinned um and it ended up being i think about half an inch shorter than the other to the Every time I hear this, yeah, I just feel bad, you know. Mm. I, I don't even like. I don't even like really replaying the thing because it's mm. just think, like it's deep. It, the thing for me is, it wasn't premeditated. It wasn't personal. No, of course it wasn't. No. It was. A lot of people say I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but I look at it the other way because that was my job to be a police officer and mm-hmm. to prevent crime. Yeah. Um, now some people say, you know, what happened to us w- was extreme, and I'm, I'm glad to say. It still is quite extreme. Hundred percent. Yeah, and that's that's a good thing. It still happens. It still will happen. Mm-hmm. And some people say, like, as a police officer, you shouldn't expect to get assaulted. But if you spend twenty years on the streets, it's gonna happen. Let's get real. Let's get in the real world. Yeah, it's gonna happen, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Something as bad as our incident. Yeah, I'm glad to say it doesn't happen that regularly. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I was lucky. I, I'm the luckiest bloke in the world. Especially back then, was there like. A lot of, not a lot, obviously, but like, was that a thing of like, please getting shot? No, that it was, a, no, thing, man. It was, it was a, big, a big thing, man. It was a big thing. No, not, not that thing. situation. I'm saying in general was like, please getting no. shot. No, it, there's only one other one okay. before this. You understand? Mm, so and then means, after that, there was a next one. Was, These um, things happen once a blue moon. They don't happen often, bro. Yeah. They don't happen often. You 100%. I know you said you don't like to obviously speak on the story. The only thing... Is that people can hopefully learn from this story? There's obviously people out there that are living your that's, lifestyle. That's the thing. There's people that are police officers as well, and it just gives context to it. So hopefully, someone don't make the same mistakes. To be totally honest, and that's to you. basically the long and short of it. Or we wouldn't be here. Yeah. Me yeah. and him wouldn't be here sitting here today telling this story to you. Yeah, that's the biggest part of it all. You get me? You, you can see how how we get on. Yeah, I know. I can see. There's we no tension. From complete that. different sides of society. We both had. it. Completely different life, mm-hmm. but we've got so much in common. Oh, I respect it. And especially, yeah. like, to get shot, I know I personally would not forgive that person, I'll be honest. And I've told James that the same. I wouldn't. Yeah. Me, I couldn't leave. I couldn't. Yeah. And the fact that he did is you have to take your hat off. I think the him. only way I yeah. could forgive you is if I had done something to you. Say, like, I just punched you in your face now and you right. shot me, then that's my fault. Right. If I was just doing me and yeah. I've been, yeah, then yeah. I, I would struggle to forgive that. Right. And basically, that's the, that's the bottom line of it. And then to come out and to be in a position to write a book and get the traction what it's got and mm-hmm. then for this whole story to become what it is now, which is a full, complete story, not half a story. Yep, the full yeah, book. The full story, yeah. Right Show them. There, yeah. Written by both of you as well, yeah, right? James. It's a joint it's book. James Seymour and Leroy Smith. That's yeah. so mad. You it's would never think that someone powerful. was going to sit there. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Super it's mad. powerful. And basically, that's both sides of the story until we collide mm-hmm. and the aftermath now air in time. You understand? You couldn't get a better book to buy and read for Christmas or to give to a young person I agree. who is gassed up, who feels like he knows everything. And he can say anything he wants. Ah, oh, them man, there's old time Washed or play that there's any yeah. talk you want to talk i know the probabilities are you will never be as live as i was yeah and the knowledge what we've got you could never have so you can fool yourself anything you want you can get at least a benz and stunt with a one dead rolex or have a 10 grand in your shoe box or even 50 it's irrelevant because when they screw you up and you go to prison yeah all. with covid mm. and all this stuff your hand's dead. There's not even cigarette in there. Not read, forget it. You understand? Your head's going to hurt you. Mm-hmm. You understand? So I'm making man know. Go find a next way to make money. Go on the internet. That's the future. 
there's big opportunities 100%. Yeah, if you use your brain you understand and try to survive or if not just live your life allow it because all of the gassed up team ain't That's gonna work and then when you're killing your own people your ancestors must ball because that's like a triple they fought for our freedom yeah, triple sin yeah it's crazy triple sin. it's a triple sin mm. so that's that's my outlook to it you get me serious question i know the answer and we all probably know the answer but just to confirm have you ever known anyone to be on the roads and actually see the end of it in terms of not going to jail for life or let me tell you this run? anyone what don't go prison the real who's on the road and living the gas of gas life and it's got every, their informers mm -hmm. i'm telling you straight yeah they are working with the police and they're getting their paycheck and it's either for money or for their freedom because intelligence has to come from somewhere you understand is that fair to and, say absolutely and it's the truth yeah mm -hmm. so you couldn't be in the community shooting people keeping up all this bad behavior and you don't never get to go to prison and everyone around you always goes to prison just that alone is common sense mm -hmm. do you understand and like i've seen it time and time again and it's not nice because always the people that go on like they're the wickedest that is doing it you understand mm. you can't never know don't feel like you're gonna know yeah. who it is you understand and that's the kind of games what get played in that world because it's all fake and it's all it's it's not real you understand you'll be more realer with your own family in your house True. with your mom and dad because mm. there's nothing real out there yeah and that's the truth at least you're able to grow and see that. Now. Yeah, and Honestly, I've seen man. it with my own eyes now. You understand? Obviously, you've had to go through what you've had to go through to see it, but it's better late than never, in my opinion, anyway. That's the truth. And you're and able to still hit, be here breathing, right. alive. And free. And so, free, and yeah. I'm, I'm grateful. I am. I'm eternally grateful. I don't. I like. I might moan about silly little things sometimes, but trust me, I'm grateful because I know to come through all what I've been through, yeah, and then to write a book, and for James to read it and reach out and for it to lead to all of this it's crazy is a big thing. That you is understand? a madness. And when Netflix comes out, you'll be watching that and you'll know what time it is. Yeah? That's it. London Badman. Best Remember story. I, I yeah. think it's the best best story I've heard. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, it's a madness. And London then to get Badman. you both Remember on together. Right yeah. To get you both out on together box. is a madness. So you know this, isn't it? Because you see you, you're a lucky guy, you know. Because at the end of the day, yeah, mm -hmm. you're the first person to get both of us together. No, I appreciate like it. I told and you. Only true to love because I see what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And I love when people try something, yeah, and put their energy into what they believe. And God willing, your thing's just going to blow. You understand? And in the end, you'll be looking back at times like this when you're yeah, stuck in moments. with it. Yeah. And your end product's going to be great Worth and it. beautiful. And I know this because you got your head on your body. You understand? I appreciate that's it. That's what man. I like to see. 100%, yeah. man. And yeah. as I said, it's like, it's a mad, originally it's a negative situation. You're in jail, he's been shot. But for what you guys are turning into is a positive. As I said, you've been able to make Absolutely. a book from it. People will be able to learn from it. Look, even if one person, 10 Absolutely. people, 100 people Absolutely. look at that and look yeah. the other way or make a different decision they may be stepping out today bro thinking the same way you was back then like yo i'm taking this day by day i'm gonna do whatever i'm gonna do and they've seen how that ended up for you and have now you turned that and said you know what this is long because like, brother you're gonna be tired whatever you want to tell yourself when you go in there there'll be officers who their kids will be dealing with you they're gonna do all of their time and their kids are gonna come and deal with you that's how long you're gonna be in there mm -hmm. you're not gonna see road you understand? Mm -hmm. It's just long in every sense of the word. You understand? I can't say it enough. You get me? Like, no one wants to be dashing their life away in that kind of way in this day and age. Because there's too much other positive things to do with your life. You understand? Simple, simple things what can get you what you want. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to get what you want, don't involve violence in what you're doing or class A drugs. Yeah, at least, mm. yeah, because them two are just gonna take you straight to prison. Yeah. And that's it. Cool. So, just to kind of, so that whole situation's happened, whatever. You've gone to Halifax, you're in hospital, you're going back for checks and whatever. How do you feel about being a police officer now? Are you even thinking to still be a police officer? Are you still in the field? How long did it take you to get back in? To talk to um, I had six on? months off in total. Um, and um, I just wanted to go back and prove I could do it. Mm. I, I love doing the job. You know, I loved it, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I was proud of what I did. So I never thought, yeah, I'm going to quit. I had a chance to, but for me, 
you'd always ask yourself that question because I've done it. I had people say to me, other police officers say, you'll never work at Brixton again. And I thought, well, why not? Mm -hmm. um, and um, I went to a stabbing of two of my colleagues when I worked at South Norwood and they both uh, returned to work and that just gave me a lot of inspiration to do the self same thing myself mm -hmm. as it did with my colleague as well. So I went back to Brixton and... Um, the, I think I touched on it earlier, some of the uh, response I got from the public that normally wouldn't come and speak to police officers, they were coming out, they were fantastic. Mm. There's, you know, there's a couple of stories in the book um, about um, you know how I had negative thoughts towards um, a young black lad wearing a Jamaican vest, mm. string vest, uh, walking up to the car and I'm thinking, oh, what's going on now, what does he want? Yeah, It was heaving with people down Cold Harbour Lane. And he just gives me a nice cold can of ginger beer. Right. So that's for you, bro. Respect. Wow. That must have been a lot and, in those days. Especially. You know, it, how much bottle did that did that lad have? Mm -hmm. You know, and he changed my life in a lot of ways. That now it was like there's good and there's bad in 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 so all. So you kind all of opened stations. up your eyes. Absolutely, that, yeah, yeah. And I had a couple mm. of experiences again that I've written in the book from 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 my colleagues. And um, yeah, it was um, it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. This hasn't been early. This has been a hard, hard journey for both of us, you know. But I always try and look at it, and I've always tried to look at this from Leroy's. Put myself in Leroy's shoes. We talked about his his previous life, his mum, yeah. how easy it was for him to get into crime. I had a great opportunity. Yeah, I went to a grammar school, mm. but I rebelled. Yeah, and um, I just wanted to get out, get a job, and do some work. And get some money that's all I wanted yeah but I, I did miss out an opportunity but I made up for it by joining the police so at what point you know when you said like the person gave you a ginger beer and whatever this is after Leroy right this and is after I've gone back the, to work so how yeah. did you feel towards Leroy when this has first happened then? Um, I never hated him because I always knew it wasn't personal um, and I always looked at it as, and we've discussed it between us many times that he could have done that whole evening different all you need to do is fire a warning shot in the air. Mm -hmm. All good? Still recording, yeah? Bless yeah. Um, but hindsight's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'd change so much about my life if I could, but you can't. And at that moment, it's that fight or flight syndrome that we get taught about. It's exactly the same at Leroy, isn't it? So I think, what would I have done in his shoes? Mm. You know? Yeah. Put it all out. Yeah, bed. so you have to... The and the other thing that I looked at as well was, it's Le Leroy served 20 years out of a 25 year sentence mm -hmm. and as you know most people serve about half generally usually right? yeah yeah, yeah? It's true so we're looking at a lot more than that mm -hmm. so for me i looked at that and i looked at everything then when i found out that he'd written his the, the first edition of the book mm -hmm. and i just looked at it and i thought if he wants to go straight what better moral support than one of his victims yeah that's it wasn't easy. It ain't been easy. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it won't be easy because yeah. I get a lot of negative feedback about this. Yeah. People say, no, nah, they should have thrown the key away. What would that say? So was, for you, was that justice, him getting 20 years? Did you um, feel like that was justice for you? Um, uh, for me, yes. Okay. If he had served 15, maybe not. But to serve 20 out of 25, look at it in, in reality. Yeah, in England that is, yeah, you normally get a half. If, if, it, if Leroy had not written that book, I would never have contacted him. Mm. Or try to make contact. Well, I need to get hold of that book. Yeah. <laughs> is it on um, Amazon as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where, where yeah. else can you get it from? Amazon. Amazon, you can get it from my website because I've got my own copies. Yeah, that will be uh, in the description. Everything will be in the description. Yeah. And, and uh, we're trying to. Uh, two WH Smiths, one in Brixton. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. That's lit. So now back to you that day. You were in Halifax. How long were you up there for? No, I was. I've gone within 24 hours okay and are you thinking to cut basically you, you already I've, knew what I you had cut, to do yeah. so you, you cut to Jamaica passports. I mean not Jamaica America Holland Holland yeah for that one okay cool yeah so you go on the ferry I remember you go saying yeah on the ferry go to Holland and then stay there for a few days then went to America and just continued living my life until yeah. I got arrested by FBI SWAT team Put on remand over there and then brought back to England. Was that for the same thing? Or were you keeping uh, up with the same stuff? That was for more things. Okay. Shooting, drugs, situation, my house. They found 20 key of weed in there, two key of coke, Mac 11 in my waist, Glock in the kitchen. It's all going This on. is in America. Yeah. Fuck, you know, that could have been so much worse, bro. Yeah. Cause, so they didn't, they did not charge you with none of that no, shit. No, they, they did, but they let all that slide to bring me back to England. 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That is yeah, yeah. mad because like America don't years, joke. I could have yeah. got sixty years over there. In yeah, yeah, no, they don't fuck with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the prison was serious as well. Yeah, and their yeah, prisons yeah, yeah, aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, they're no, nah, no, nah, serious. Not a joke. The guys, them are physical. Yeah. So, so, so when you're even yeah, when I was out there, in America, it's only because the Jamaicans were ours. We were like some thirty Jamaicans, so mm. I went to jail with them. So I was kind of half covered, but right. it could have gone different. You understand? Mm. Yeah. How long are you in America for? A couple months? On remand for about five months and then back on the aeroplane to England. But how long do you get caught oh, in America? I was over there for about nine months a year. So for nine months a year, you were just doing what you were doing here, basically, yeah. but over in America. Yeah. And other than the one time that you ended up getting caught by the FBI, did you ever get stopped again? Or over there? Over there. Yeah. Was no, that, no, 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 no. So that was just the one time yeah, that... Yeah. Um, over there, it was like I was just living my life normal with some Jamaicans. Mm. What was over there, I was in South Bronx before first East Tremont and Daly and I moved over to Connecticut, Bridgeport and like they was like in some s war with some other Jamaicans and like l the last person what came there to be around them, the enemies saw them with that guy and right. they saw the guy again on his own and they mashed him up and there's an ex outside the restaurant where they killed him. So that's the environment what I went into, mm. you understand? But those guys were like linked with me from my friend in Jamaica and they respected him. So I was safe in that circle. But it was a serious circle, you understand? So you, would you say it was worse than England, clearly? But did you feel, did you feel no, like I it was, was worse I, though? No, I was, I was all right. But I just was conscious to know the what? man them are more serious and they're more killer mm. and every man's got gun. And just so that you don't get slipping like have too much money in the house or this and that for them to have a reason to want to kill you you understand because it's them kind of people mm. you get me they will do them things if they really feel like it's worth it so this is what happens when you're living that kind of life there's mm. always going to be someone murkier than you <laughs> or more devilish 100%. no matter what you say you understand and especially when you have stuff people are going to be yeah, looking yeah, on yeah, you as yeah, red eyes so once yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. money and you're that guy yeah, there'll yeah, be yeah, someone yeah, that's yeah. trying to take that yeah, away yeah. from you so. even if they can't do it up front then they do it around the back yeah they might even be yeah, friends yeah, yeah, you yeah, or yeah, set yeah. you up or what not yeah. um, so you're there for nine months are you even getting any call do anyone even know you're there yeah I think they did they did know I was there okay were you speaking yeah. in, were you keeping contact with anyone I was from keeping you? contact with a load of people right that's not going to give away it's people talking yeah and they air tittle tattle from the streets. Mm. That's how they get their intelligence. Yeah. yeah, but they didn't know where I was. America's a big place. So, would you ever plan to move from America? Or was that where you was planning no, to lay your news? I was just there oh. until that incident happened. What got me arrested in America? Mm. Do you understand? And that was a whole another scenario, of sequence of events, mm. what led to that happening, and a SWAT team arresting me. Yeah, like I saw it said SWAT team and um. Yeah. FBI. Yeah. So when you was out there, did you plan to just was that? Cause obviously, you you know you saying you're on the move, on the move, on the move. Was that? Yeah, like I was just you? I was just gonna just jam there for a while, and I was just living. Okay. So I weren't really looking ahead much further than that. So did you know that? Oh no, because the SWAT team would have grabbed you and then probably done their research to then know who you was, right? No, nah, what happened was the person what I was trying to kill after on that day mm -hmm. went running into a hospital screaming. He's going to kill me, he's going to kill me and who I am and that I shot two police in London and that's it. Obviously, they're coming for you now. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's what happened. So they knew who I was when they came for me and I was lucky they didn't just mash me up but because it was London, what? English police what wanted me. Wow. That's the reason why because one of them said, we don't bring in cop shooters, we don't bring them in. Mm. So that tells you what he's saying. Yeah. On Do side. with that on the pavement and that's it. Yeah, because yeah. if they had shot you, they probably would have got away with that scot-free. No, you shot a fed will. before, so yeah. like, why would you do it again? The only reason they brought me back was because it's England police to put the Wanted request. You. Yeah. And they say they prefer, in England, they prefer the justice to be done and for you to get a sentence, innit? They not prefer to just for you to be killed. England's mm. different. The mindset's different from America. Do you understand? Yeah. In England, ideally, they'd prefer you to come and go to prison. Yeah, definitely. For whatever. And then they could understand why you did it or this or that. So they prefer for you to do a bird than to that's actually it. just yeah. die. That's, so, that's it, yeah. So did the FBI and SWAT team come in with those requests? Like, did they know what they was going into? No, was it a well-planned through no, thing? No, they, what was it? Basically, she's told them everything. I'm in the house. I've gone to, to the shop to buy some oil. And with my other friend, a Jamaican, and we drove out the compound and he said, stop. And I put the brake 
from gas stop break and then I went to go and draw for the sign in my waist and he said no and as he said no he threw his gun into the console so from then it was all in a half a second I knew something went right so he threw his gun in the console and then I just saw the pistols coming up from all sides man saying don't move don't move motherfucker I got you I got you gonna blow your head off you understand mm -hmm. and it's them you understand the SWAT team and then they just took us out of the car bang man's head in the bonnet and then took out the gun. What's this motherfucker, motherfucker? You understand? And arrested. So what year is that now? Because that happened in 94, the whole thing. Yeah. You get caught, what, 95, 96? Yeah, 95. 95. So now you know basically you're fucked at this point. Yeah. You ain't escaping. Super fucked. Yeah, super fucked. Pardon. Like, yeah, it wasn't even 94, is it? I got arrested <laughs> August. Yeah. When I looked online, it said 96 store, but obviously you guys yeah, were people. No, that's, that's, the, court that's in, the court. The court in okay, because you would have been in remand yeah, and all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. remand, yeah. Cool, so yeah, you know you're Sorry. fucked. And how long did they keep you in? Did they, they didn't instantly extradite you, did they? No, nah, about a few months in America. And then I came back to over here, went to Belmarsh Unit. Yeah, it's category then, A, isn't it? Category like, A. Yeah, and then serious. my Cody, he was on the normal house blocks because they already know that, you understand? He's half going home. Mm. And then had the trial. He got his not guilty. And I got my 25 years. So he, 68 years altogether. 25, so 18, 14. 5 and 2 Damn Yeah Damn So uh, how long did he get Did he get anything Nothing he got so not just got away He's got through basically For that whole yeah. situation Wow <laughs> Not guilty Mad So what's going through your head That whole period From like just the whole Remand thing Obviously you never from Do you there, just know You're just fucked Like you yeah. know there's no well, No I thought I was praying To get a not guilty But once you get the bird Then you know you're fucked innit? Of course yeah You've got 25 years So that's it but and did you look at the situation at hand, like the way you handled it? Did you actually bro, think bro, in your heart? It's like, not like that, bro. You're mm. just gone now. Mm. You're finished. And that's it. Mm. You understand? Started smoking some drugs. You understand? Didn't want to deal with reality at all. You get me? It's not a joke, bro. It's serious. You understand? Your days are done. Mm. And that's it. So that's what happened. And that went on for a long time. And like now, you go in there, the only thing you're going to find in there is spice yep. to drive you insane. Fucks real fast. Up. Yeah. There's not even weed. Yeah. There's nothing for you in there. You are going to do the most toughest bird you've ever done. Because now it's not like before. When I was in there, there was alcohol, weed, every drug. Mm. You understand? Class A drugs, every kind of drug. And it was all the time available. So you could do escapism. Mm. Now, there's nothing in there. Not even cigarette. Chris Graylin banned cigarettes. You've got vape and that's it. They used to give you cigarette packs and that, innit? Yeah, tobacco, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's all gone. Mm. Vape and that's it. So it's not a kind of, no kind of joke. Mm. It's serious, brother. And then another thing, religion. So if you're not, uh, say, in a high security prison if you're not muslim yeah and you're not a brother and you act up mm -hmm. yeah or catch up with a brother you've got a problem because you're going to be after beef everybody yeah it's all for one and one for all so then politics play out in there every day mm -hmm. it's not a joke you get me so if you go in there as well and a, a man or people what you're in us things with because obviously if you're into gang thing, there's going to be other people from your clique what's been doing life or whatever. And then you come and the people that have been in there before you and they're all comfortable, they're going to pattern you out. Mm -hmm. And you ain't going to win the probabilities. It's politics, brother. And it's just not nice. It's murky, 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 murky bad. You understand? And For that 20 stretch. Yeah, what would you throughout say? the whole bird. What, what was one, one word you could describe that whole thing? To you? Like, well, not even one word, just as a phrase. What would you call that experience? A nightmare. Mm. That's the best way I can put it. I've seen man get burned up with hot oil and their skins peeling off of them. I've seen every kind of nastiness you can think of right there inside that place. It's like a living nightmare, sterile, no nothing name humanity. It's not a place you want to go. That's the best I can tell you, bro. Yeah. And was you in Belmarsh the whole no, thing? You get that, moved around and stuff, That's just it? remand. Okay. So when you get sentenced and you go to high security prisons, Long La and Whitemore, Franklin and Full Sutton, mm. that's called dispersal.
that's like a dustbin. You're just in there now. And all of the people in there are doing 30s, 40s, 25s. Mm. Everybody's a bad man. Everyone's either an arm robber, a killer, or something. That's why you're in there. Mm. High security, cat A, double cat A, triple cat A. And then that's it. You're just in there. So while um, I think in the court and the trial's going on, are you going to court as well and seeing all of this? Yeah, I went, I think nearly every day I went to court. Did you actually have any, did they make you do it, like take part in anything in the court? Like, did I you have to speak evidence. at all? Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Fair um, enough. Yeah. So did you actually have to like take like a sticker? I don't, I've been to court before, not for myself, but I've seen other things transpire. Cause obviously anyone can go to court for like public gallery yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But did you have to actually like go down and speak or yeah, did you? Yeah, to give evidence. Okay, yeah, fair enough, both, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Cool. Because yeah. I'm still living in denial with them times trying to tell people about it's not me. I'm okay. still trying to go not guilty in it, mm. and and you know my QC, he gave me a book after I got sentenced. Yeah, a book about miracles. <laughs> Seriously, I didn't know that. You needed a miracle then, still. <laughs> this guy, bro. So Lawrence Kirsham, that was his name. Lawrence Kirsham, QC. What was your case? Queen's counsel. What like what was your argument to it? Because you're going that, not guilty, no, so you I need to have. That, yeah, I said that is I'm the T boy. I said my brethren, because my brethren got murdered like while I was on remand. Okay. So I said he did it, and I'm yeah. I'm I'm the yes man on the team. Mm. You understand? And I just run around and do what he tells me because mm. I'm the little boy, and he's the big man. You understand? Yeah. So that was my argument, and obviously, uh, my co-defendant had some QC called William Clegg. He's like some real serious guy. Okay. At the time, he was on fire. Yeah. And then, everyone's cases. Yeah, he, yeah, and he said like he got the pictures of the of the motorbike here. Yeah, he says, Members of the jury, can you see this bike? <laughs> you understand? Look how clean it is. You would say it's somebody's pride and joy. You understand? I would suggest you understand. Them hard, yeah, just, listen, just making it hit listen, everything. The man cleaned up the thing properly. Got you understand? Yeah, and then like my QC, he knew the truth in it, mm. so his heart wasn't in it, and he was stumbling and bumbling, and you just could see it for what it is in it. I should have went there and pleaded guilty and said sorry in it. Yeah, really. But I wasn't being rational at that time. You still in the dance, you said, mm. so you weren't really trying to come to terms with the fact no. that it happened, and yeah. really like, looking at it now. You can see that the odds were basically yeah, against it you. It would have made more sense to go guilty. Yeah. And, but as you said, it's, it's, in that it's a mindset. Moment, yeah, at that moment of time, that was it's how you mindset. were thinking. So it's a mindset. It's a mindset. It is where it is. So you get sentenced in 96? Yeah. So you would come out no, 1995, I get sentenced. So you come out, what, 2015? I came out 2011. Oh, Okay. That's the first time I came out. Well, like out, out, or out, just like a uh, no. day release. You know, you get out, you get day releases no. if you're category enough. Nah. No, I'd be mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. out. When okay. I had no choice, no tag. I got released, and I lasted for nine months. And you went straight and I went back, back for two years, and then I came. That makes it to the full twenty, mm. and then I came out, uh, two thousand and fourteen, mm -hmm. and I've been out ever since. And that's when I wrote the book and everything. So like seven years has passed. Mm. And I'm here doing productive things. Respect it, hundred percent. So even when you, so when how, I came how, out, how long do you get anyway? Like from that main, uh, twenty five years. So you that's get what you're told. Sixteen years. You do sixteen years, eight months, and then you can apply for parole. Am I right? No, then no? that's the end that's of your it. sentence. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so where did the twenty five come from? I'm just curious. Twenty five is the sentence. So out of it, you do two thirds. Okay, cool. I'm with you. I'm with Stand you. I'm with you. So that would have been the two thirds of that you had done. You've come and out. If and you want to get parole after twelve years, they can look at you, but they're not giving you parole for them kind of things. So did you get those? So for that, you wouldn't have yeah, got it. You yeah, get, you could. They can look at you, but you're not going to get parole. Mm. Yeah. So, so what's going through your head as you've come out now? The first time you come out, of the jail, first time I come do you know? Out. Do you know when he's coming up? Are you like alerted of this stuff? Yeah, or is yeah, it just yeah. Like we're victim support contact you and keep you updated. That's how I find out about the book. Mm. Um, they keep you updated about because um, obviously when Leeway came out, it's still on, um, on license. Yeah, that's still what on they license. Say. So yeah. they kept us informed of whether he's keeping to his um, his restrictions. And for everyone that's watching, once you breach your license, you just go straight back in. It yeah, could be for absolutely. anything, pretty much that you do, right? Anything. I know people what's gone back now for all different kinds of things, mm. slapping their misses, 
drugs, just a piss test positive. You get me? You can go back for anything because they got you up. Once you're on license, mm. the, the game's different. Whatever your probation tells you, that's what time it is. And that's that. You get me? It's eight months. And then you can apply for parole, am I right? No, then no? that's the end that's of it. your sentence. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay, so where did the 25 come from? I'm just curious. 25 is the sentence. So out of it, you do two thirds. Okay, cool. I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. So that would have been the two thirds of that you had done. You've come out. And if and you want to get parole after 12 years, they can look at you, but they're not giving you parole for them kind of things. So did you get those? So for that, you wouldn't have yeah, got it, you yeah? Yeah, because they can look at you, but you're not going to get parole. Mm. So so what's going through your head as you've come out now? The first time you come out of jail, first time I come do, you know out. He, do you know when he's coming out? Are you like alerted of this stuff? Yeah, or is yeah, it just yeah. Like we're a... victim support contact you and keep you updated. That's how I find out about the book. Mm. Um, they keep you updated about because um, obviously when Leeway came out, it's still on um, license. Yeah, that's still what I'm saying. So yeah. they kept us informed of whether he's keeping to his um, his restrictions. And for everyone that's watching, once you breach your license, you just go straight back in. It yeah, could be for absolutely. anything, pretty much that you do, right? Anything. I know people what's gone back now for all different kinds of things. Mm. Slapping their misses, <clears throat> drugs, just a piss test positive. You get me? You can go back for anything because they got you up. Once you're on license, mm. the, the game's different. Whatever your probation tells you, that's what time it is. And that's that. You get me? Could your hand handed the rules? Was you given like a curfew and stuff? Everything. I was on yeah. the map. I had curfew, signing on every like three times a day. Mm. All sorts of stuff. And if you don't sign on or don't you breach your curfew, you're going straight back in, straight isn't it? Straight back. Yeah. Mm. It's very serious. You get me? And it's high in, high intensity. Mm. And if you ain't got people looking after you and money, you're going to feel tempted to go and do things back again because the pressure is on just for clothes and basically Survival. Survival, yeah. So even when you've... Leading up to you coming out, what are you telling yourself? Are you planning to change? Are you planning to be on the same stuff? To What's be going honest, through your head? When I came out the first time, I was still thinking of it stupid. Okay. And that's why it didn't work. Mm. And then, obviously, uh, when I came out the second time, that was different. And I was lucky enough to be around a person that was very, very uh, educated and genuine. Mm -hmm. And this woman basically looked after me, helped me to be everything that I became. Yeah. And that's basically the truth. If it wasn't for her, my life would have been different. Reckon you'd still be in the same cycle? I reckon I'd be dead or in prison, yeah. Mm. So she was the person what helped me in lots of different ways, nurture, financial, mm -hmm. every different way. So when did you write the first version? 2015. What made you even think to write it? Because I'm sure... She's the lady, what I was telling okay, you Okay, so she was so the one that kind of put you on that right everything path. Everything, on the right path. She's like, listen, you can't be just out here and you're, when people say, what do you do? You ain't got something to tell them. Mm. You're just looking at the floor. You've got to be something. And then I thought about it and I said to myself, if I write a book that can help young people, True. Or help somebody mm -hmm. not to be going through the same thing what I went through. So it's like a win-win scenario. Yeah. And how, how him coming out? How did you did you feel any way about it? Was it just like oh okay cool? Sixteen years ago, don't really care. Or was you a bit on edge? Did you feel any first time you came out? Yeah, I was on edge. Okay, I was always looking over my shoulder. Mm. I, I didn't think anything would happen mm -hmm. because it wasn't personal. But it's always a what if, isn't it? And so, but certainly the second time, um, no, I didn't. You know, I thought he'd, he'd served his time, and that's near enough. Sort of when the book was out and. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah first time I was on age would you say you both have trauma from all the stuff that you lot have gone through I've definitely got trauma mm. yeah definitely I think that situation definitely has changed the way you just think move and Bro, feel and just your den general you've seen I know yeah. interactions what we've had yeah and exactly you can tell yeah I'm a person living with all the things mm -hmm. and that's because of the things what I've done mm -hmm. and the way I've done it and I know how I've gripped people mm -hmm. in the most wickedest ways. And, I, and I've seen how it does them and the shock and everything when people can't even talk English again. <laughs> you understand? I've seen every different thing play out. So now when you have to live and you're living like a civilian now. Hard to adapt to it, isn't it? It's hard. Yeah, so I realise. Hide behind a bag of cameras, bag of dog, bag of everything. 
could deflect things into your favour. Because that's why even when we... Don't like crowds. And yeah, no, nah, yeah. that's why even when we spoke, I respect that. Because even though I've never gone to jail or done anything like that, I'm from an area where that stuff happened. So I'm, I know every... You know what I'm saying? So I understand it fully in that sense. Have Did you get any help from that situation? Do they give you... As a victim, I'm saying, like, did you get did you get any help? Yeah, I that? did get help, yeah. Um, the thing is, my case, and go for it in, in the book, is a little bit different because I had a whole number of events. So the actual shooting itself, I was okay. Um, but then I had some other incidents mm. that kicked it all off for me. And um, Grizzly, grimy incidents. It's... it's um, Within the workforce or pri- private life? No, at, at work. And one or two things in my private life. Right. You know, I, I think one of the things that really kicked it off was when I, when, when one of my close mates got killed in a motorbike accident. And right. sort of like, that was just the last straw. Mm. You know? And then I had other incidents happen after that and you, you get the odd, um, you know, it comes back again. But if I, I think the thing is now is when I can recognise when I might be vulnerable and I can deal with that that side but PTSD is is awful it's wicked mm. it's absolutely wicked I wouldn't wish it on anybody mm. you know um, but then I've met a, a lot of people that have been through stuff worse than me mm-hmm. and um, you've got to put your life into perspective we said it ourselves how lucky am I to be here literally yeah literally <laughs> you know and every day you got to think well you know that's a blessing isn't it yeah where well, do you, where do you think week, you're well, gone? Go on. Next week we've got interview with Sky TV. Yeah, synopsis is getting written now. Yeah, for this Netflix, so it's gonna happen. Certified, yeah. I love that. And the energy and the the things what's gonna come from this story is gonna reverberate long after we've left this earth. That's, so that's what I believe. Hundred uh, percent, so. without a doubt. So. Yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, it's a and, story to be told. Even if you Google like my name for sure now. Everything done. Yeah. comes up at the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that tells you the digital prints hard already. It's gonna stick. So it's gonna get more, and it's gonna hold because the future is all gonna be on the internet. Remember, mm. so it's not gonna go nowhere. You get me? Um. So in terms of obviously his trauma as a victim, as he said, and also the situation <coughs> that your friend passing and other situations that are in the book. What would you say your main trauma is in terms of how you think and move My now? Trauma, what do you think it comes from? He's my own insecurities and not being liked to be around a bag of people and like that even though I haven't got a direct enemy mm. you understand but when you just done so much dirt anyone can have a little family who's turned bad and who wants to take up something on their shoulder just mm. to prove a thing yeah like that or whatever I don't know mm. and like I'm just over cautious over everything. Like before, when I was walking with gun and all that, mm. I was the opposite. I didn't care about Feel nothing. comfortable. Yeah. Mm. Like nothing would, would phase me. And if there was an issue, I know I could pattern it out quick. Like I remember one time I was going to an ice skating ring and I was with some girls and I had my uh, thing on me and we was skating around and I had this big chain on yeah and obviously some youths from some other ends must be north for must have checked say I'm I'm a dinner meal or something or mm. I just got that big chain on just because I'm stupid yeah <laughs> you understand mm. that alone should have tell them forget this one mm. yeah so they're there pre me pre me then I see them go next to the gate so they're waiting for me now to come out you understand and then I walk with the girls and I come and then as I got to the entrance I just pop up the thing and beat two in the air no conversations happened. <laughs> I'm just making people understand oh, yeah. while going around here. Yeah. And that was it. Everybody just went back into their shell and I got in my car and we went and the girls were like, why did you do that? Da, 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 da. And I was like, like, you didn't see. And they're like, no, they didn't see nothing. Mm. But I know what I'm looking for in it. Yeah, but now, eyes open, yeah, looking up right, but now it would be reverse. I wouldn't have a big chain on, but if I was in a situation with them people, I haven't got nothing backing up nothing. Mm. So I'm going to have to be, thinking the opposite now trying to avoid those situations in the right. first place you understand mm. so it's like you have to think ahead now to make sure that you don't get yourself in a situation where you feel uncomfortable or any kind of thing because it's not going to work out and 
even in my friends and all that now, I pick them different. Yeah. So I don't go around a bag of people. And the people what I go around are 99.9 straight heads. Mm. When I say that, I mean straight people who ain't even been in prison. They don't know about crime mm. and they're just normal. You understand? That's what I need to be for them to rub off on me. You understand? I don't need negative around me at all. Do you feel like that's a big part of it as well? Your surroundings, who you was yeah, around? Yeah, yeah. Well, back then, I, I, I turned myself into everything where I choose to go on the bad road, yeah? Mm -hmm. But now, I've sucked onto good people to make it rubber for me in a positive. So you can do it whichever which way, good or bad, it's up to you to choose which one you want to take. Mm. The good way just takes longer, but it's more productive and it's safer and better for you. The bad way can happen quicker, but it's negative and it's not good for you. That's it. It's as simple Perfect. as that. Uh, it's just good that you've channeled that energy in the right way and you've done the right thing because it's, it's easy to get caught back up in stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? People do it all the time. They go in and out, in and out, in and out. Obviously, you went back in after, but matter of fact is, is that right now, that I believe... Enough. I believe you're on the right path. If, you, if I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to see Lil Ray and Joe in six months. I'll, I'll be real. I'll be yeah. with you right now. I'll be like, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I genuinely do feel like Trust you have me, changed. I know where I'm going in life. And that's and good. I know who helped me to get on this road. Mm -hmm. That's why I said it, said about her. I didn't mention her in name, but mm -hmm. she knows. She knows who she, she is, is and that's all that matters. And that's what matters. And basically, I'm grateful to her and to James mm -hmm. and to everyone else who's helped me to be in this situation. And that's it. And I know it's going to do good because I go to schools. I've looked into more than 2,000 kids' eyes. And when I'm talking, they listen. Mm. Do you understand? Youth clubs, all of that stuff before COVID. So I know we've done good already, but the future is going to be even better. Uh, that, so I just, I think everyone wants to know, how do you guys get into contact? You've seen the book. What, what, what's going um, on? The book was written. I think you were still on licence, weren't you? So Fixing Support contacted me, told me about the book. Um, I was training a crew of police officers um, to drive in response mode. What year is this, by the way? Uh, 2016. So you're not even a f police officer no more? I, um, yeah, no, I was a um, civilian, yeah. Yeah, okay, And cool. um, the crew I had heard me chatting to this victim support lady, and they bought the book for me and just signed it about what an inspiration I was to police officers. And so I read it and... Um, I read it again. I think I read it about three or four times, and then I just thought, if he really wants to um, make a difference and turn his life around, I'll support you. Was that your first initial response to reading it? Um, I was quite open-minded about it, um, and I know that some of the criticisms of it have been that it highlights a gangster's life. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that's the way the gangster's life is. Yeah, Literally. if he wants any girl, he can have. It's that simple, mm -hmm. yeah? It is that simple. After you use good old-fashioned chat-up lines, you know? <laughs> yeah? But yeah. it is, you've got so much it's power. It's a different world, isn't it? You've got mm -hmm. so yeah, much power. True. And I, for me, it was an insight, and I, I like listening to Leroy about his life, what he did. I find it interesting because it's a side of life that a lot of police officers and retired police officers actually don't really fully understand. Very true. You're from two different worlds. Absolutely. And I find it quite, I do find it interesting and I found his book very interesting. So you and what I liked that, about right. it, and I've always said it to Leroy, um, is the honesty. Mm -hmm. There is no bullshit in that book. It's straight mm -hmm. down the line and with me as well on my side and that's the type of person the, that I am. That's what's important because I haven't even tried to, like every last part of it, there's parts I didn't want to talk about. You think I want to talk about taking drugs in prison, this and that, but I did because it would be, I'd be fake if I didn't talk the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You understand? So there's no lies in the book at all. And that's what makes it live. You get me? Yeah. A lot of people I know that have read the book said, no, I didn't like it. Mm. And all that. And For I'm what like, reasons? Uh, like I said, they say, well, it's sort of highlight, it's highlighting what he did mm. as a bad man. And believe me, he was a bad man. Yeah? Mm. But for me, that's the way the life is. Yeah? That's the way it is. But as we said earlier... How long is it going to last? How long is it going to last? And we always used to say in the police, like with the gangsters and the drug dealers, if you live till 30, you've had a good life. You're lucky. Mm. You're, yeah. You're either in prison or you're dead. That's the only choice you've got. It ain't going any other way. 
That's the truth. Did you think like that in those days as yeah, well? Yeah, that yeah, you took yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I thought to myself, I'll be dead by 30. So I weren't really pretty. So that's why you're kind of living it yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> that's and that's what, that's what a lot of people just, that's they the just truth. don't see it from the other side. Mm. Mm. Still yeah. Yeah. Cool, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's mad. It, it's real it's education crazy. for so many people. When we went to see the commissioner together, mm. didn't we? Yeah, yeah. And we were all educating each other Definitely. about different sides of life. And imagine you're coming from being a gangster person to a prisoner to a civilian to meeting the commissioner of police on the roof of Scotland Yard. You know how <laughs> deep that is? It's mad. What happened when you got That's, that call? How did you feel about that? No, I didn't get a call. You I didn't got get a call? Through James. Okay. Because you know, obviously James works doing what he's doing so mm -hmm. he's got his circle how he's getting his calls and uh i didn't even take it as that at first i thought oh i didn't i didn't hear back nothing i thought and i was late imagine i was late bro mm -hmm. and i had to race down there and then she was still there and then we went up there and it was it was, it was an insight you get me it was an insight yeah so i know from what i've seen in life on all circles from all angles, yeah, I can talk the truth for what it is, yeah, and people will be wise to listen. Mm. Yeah. 100%. So even when you've had contact with each other, what are you thinking? Are you trying to confess it? Are you trying to even hear it? What, what, do you, what do you think? If the person you just shot is trying to... No, we're past that stage now. Because remember, I've been communicating with James now since a few years. But that's what I'm saying. Why? Yeah. What, why so at first, yeah. when it all happened, mm. I was scared, innit? Because I was thinking, bro, I, I was scared. And mm. I brought the same lady with me. We met in a train station for the first time. And that broke the ice. And then things were just built up from there. So but obviously, you would be scared, or you'd be. It's a lot of distrust sure, at first yeah. on both sides. Yeah. What was you both thinking though? Like on that link up, what? What? As I said, I was. You scared. were scared. Yeah. I, I, I've never hated Leroy, mm. as I said earlier. Um, yeah, he wasn't. I didn't like him, but I didn't hate him. <coughs> yeah, for what he did, because I've always tried to look at it from his point of view. Mm. Yeah. Um, yes, I've been a bit um, bitter about it. Yeah. Oh. But for me, that meeting up, it's just, that is just gone. Mm. You know, I don't have nightmares about it or anything like that. I actually, I actually enjoy talking about it because that's why we're doing this, to educate people. Mm. And that involves not just youngsters, that involves police officers as well, educating some of them. Definitely. Everybody, you know, every day is a school day, people say, don't they? It's true, you learn something every day. Yeah. Honestly. And, um... Hmm. Yeah, yeah well, there was a lot of distrust. Obviously, there was, but mm. it's built up and it's built up. And now we talk about anything, and we get on. Mm. That's all. It's amazing. It is, it is yeah. amazing. I, I never thought when this 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 journey started, and I never thought we would get on as well as what we do. Mm. And then you know, I could I could tell Leroy about, I could tell Leroy a secret, and I know he'd keep it to himself. Mm. Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. And if something was to go down now, I'm involved. My life, I'm putting it up front, straight. Mm. No, no one couldn't make something that happened to my man in front of me. They have to be both of us. That's what time is. And you know what's great about because that one? Huh? You know what it is. Mm. Enough people in that other life is so fake. Yeah, mm. it's just ridiculous. It's true. Yeah, your own brethren will make line you up to dead. If the price is right, or run away when things get sticky, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a self survival scenario, and it's nothing genuine about it. My man's genuine, yeah, and I'm genuine, naturally genuine. And if someone deals with me genuine, I will give them genuine back, and that's me. Yeah. You get me? It's um, you know, people say to me, "Oh, I don't think he's changed." I went, "Ah, oh, okay." Um, so. When uh, Sergeant Matt Ritana was tragically murdered at Croydon. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. First person I get a message from, this man. First person who wanted to go and lay flowers was this person. Are you telling me that's a, a bad boy gangster? That's a changed man. Mm, because true. I could turn around and I, 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 you know, there's so many police officers that wouldn't do it. Well, I didn't know him. It's mm. not the point. Right. It's not the point. Yeah. And not only yeah. that, yeah, I'm... Um, 
an old person now, yeah? yeah, in generations, yeah. So all of what I've got now is the real me, yeah. And so now I can think about things and do make the right choices and do things for the right reasons. Yeah. You understand? So years ago, I wouldn't even have thought, oh, the policeman's been shot in the station, oh, that's sad, or this or that. I'd thought, oh, good, or whatever, because yeah. yeah. it's yeah. my enemies. Whole yeah. mentality's changed. Right, mm. and that's what it is. And when you go through life enough, if you live long enough, you, you might get lucky enough for your mentality to change, or better still, don't have a bad mentality in the first place. Literally. You think that comes with age or with knowledge, just learning and life? For me, not learning and life and other mm. people rubbing off on me. But you can have good or bad, as I said. Mm. It's, you know, for me, there's um, a very kind side to Leroy, but it's never been developed in his life because of the people he's been around. Obviously, your grand, yeah, um, bless her. Um, but it's never been developed. Well, I, I've been surrounded by people who love and care all my life. Mm. And um, so you actually look at somebody like Lee, is, is it his fault? And for me, I don't think it is. Mm. I so think it's just a whole scenario of where he was living, what life was like living on those estates. So it's the bigger like, picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bigger picture. Murder, this, that, that, and yeah. it all combulates to yeah. make things happen. You know, if, you, if, you look at, if you look out your door and you see people earning a couple of grand a week selling drugs, yeah, gonna fall for wh- that. where are you going to go? Yeah, where are you going to go? And that's yeah. why it's good when, you're when able to When it's hard to, to get that. a job for, um, f- for whatever reason, yeah. yeah? Um, wh- where are you going to go? Mm-hmm. You've got no role model, have you? I've That's always true. had role models in my life. It does kind of start from early on what your surroundings are and who's Absolutely. around you. And you know what's like in a teenage? You. Your head's messed up as a teenager anyway, isn't it? Mm. And see those things going on, it's so easy for them to get into Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So carry on. Um, you know, so for me, there's a side there to Leroy that I would never have said this after the shooting. Mm. But as time has developed, I've matured myself. And... Um, you know, I've looked at it and I thought, yeah, there is a side there that I've seen and I know of other things that Leroy's done mm-hmm. um, where that, that kind-heartedness has never been developed. Yeah. And that's not his fault. Yeah. Look at what he's been surrounded by all Definitely. his life. And to come out and change, you have to say that takes a strong man. 100%. And yeah. I think that... The, and to stay stay straight, straight as well. Straight as well. It's true because people man. go back. Definitely. And I think the main... I think a good message that goes out is that the fact that you two can sit next to each other, be friends after what's happened. Look, someone could do something so minute and that's dead forever and that leads to people dying. It leads to a whole bunch of stuff that can go on for generations and decades. The fact that you guys are able to sit down and make it work just should be a message to everyone really that don't even let it get to that extreme. Do you get what I'm saying? I can never see us falling out. Mm. I I just can't see that. We might not agree on some stuff Mm -hmm. and that's a good thing. Yeah? yeah, but we will never get into a round. It never be a case of well, I don't agree. I'm not talking to you. Yeah. That's never going to happen. We, he, we 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 will be friends for the rest of our lives. He he he's a uh, patriotic, so the queen and that. Yeah, he would like and me because mm. of other stuff I might not like. Yeah, because so they just won't talk about that because that's that's his different type to. of world. Yeah, yeah. different world now. Yeah. It makes sense. That's what it is. Work with what works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on that. You understand? And then you can move forward. I have to respect it, man. It takes two... As I said, I could never have been shot and been... It's just a mad situation. But as I said, to be able to come out, make a book together, be friends with you guys, I can clearly tell there is like a chemistry and from what you guys have even stated, it goes without saying it's... Slightly, yeah. I think it's a very powerful message it sends out to everybody, 100%. And I'm... Personally, no bullshit gonna actually go and check the book out myself and buy it because I, I like reading and you know, you'll you learn a lot from it. Trust depth me. into you'll, your story you'll, you'll learn a lot and yours because it's got both in counts, um, both accounts from both of you, right? Mm. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, no, yeah, you'll learn sure a lot to get from that it. 100% out the box, out of the box, yeah, out of the box by Leroy Smith and James Seymour. Yeah, this uh, is fire, right? Here. Power, no, powerful message, honestly. I appreciate both of you guys for coming down anyway. Yeah. Um, look after yourselves keep up the good work and yeah now as I said I'll check out the book and everything will be in the description as well guys so make yeah, sure to check that out outoftheboxbook.uk that's the website lots of content on there articles from the Times the Guardian 
and whatnot, videos, mayor's office, all sorts of stuff on there. Mm. And a couple of other com companies where I've set up, Guerrilla Media, which is like a marketing uh, company. We, we, we do adverts, blast adverts on buildings and all of that with a big laser projector. Yeah, you sent me the video, I remember. Yeah, and then we've got billboards also. And then obviously we do talks. Yeah. And, uh, well, there you go. All right. That's it.